Traditionally, we've always taught that we should perform rescues using low-risk techniques first, working our way up towards higher-risk techniques. That philosophy over the years has now started to change, and now the belief is that we should use the most effective rescue technique to just go out and get the job done. Before we do that, we need to make two different assessments. The first assessment is to assess our own skill levels, ask ourselves, can we perform that skill? And the second one is acceptable level of risk should we go out and perform those skills? If we can answer yes to can we and should we perform any given rescue technique, we then want to use the most efficient, effective, and fastest technique possible to get the rescue done and over with so we can then head on down the river. When we come to the realization that someone is foot and trapped, we want to be able to act quickly to be able to rescue them. We realize that in the event that someone has their head up and they have an open airway, we're going to try and provide stabilization for them. What we buy with stabilization is some time to be able to complete the rescue. There are many different ways that we can stabilize our subject. We could toss them a paddle. For two bank techniques, the simplest and fastest technique will be referred to as a stabilization line with a simple cinch. This is a technique where we can get the line across in front of our subject, pull them upstream to provide some support against the current, then put a cinching device on so that we can pull them upstream and move them back over towards the strong side or the bank where we have the majority of our rescuers and our egress. In the event that our subject is within 10 meters or 30 feet of one bank or one working zone, we could potentially try and use a one bank foot entrapment technique known as the ET3. What we do with this is we can take a throw bag, divide it in half, butterfly, into two different coils into our strong throwing hands and throw a loop of rope over our subject. Once we get that horseshoe around them, we can cross the lines, pull the pop, pulling their body upstream, and once they're free, pendulum them into shore. This is a very effective technique to get someone who has an airway, is within 10 meters of one bank, to provide them both stabilization and extrication using just one line and two rescuers. Dealing with a subject who has a face down foot entrapment is probably one of our biggest concerns or biggest nightmares that we could have on the river. It's really going to take quick action and impeccable teamwork to be able to do a rescue in a sufficient amount of time to be able to get their head back up and breathing again. Instead of trying to waste time just stabilizing them, what we want to try and do is work on immediate extrication. In the event that our subject does not have an airway, and we have access to two banks within 20 meters of each other, we can try a technique which is referred to as the paddle pull. The way this is gonna work is that we'll get two rescuers on either bank on either side of the subject. From there, we'll first try to slap the subject with the rope to see whether they're conscious enough to be able to reach up and provide some stabilization. In the event that they can't do that, what we'll do is we'll put slack in the rope so we make a big loop or horseshoe downstream of our subject. From there, we're gonna integrate a couple of other pieces of equipment into our rescue system. We'll start off with a paddle and a prussic and a carabiner. We're going to wrap the prussic around the T-grip of the paddle and clip that onto our rope. We'll do that on both sides, either side of our subject. And place the T-grip down on the bottom of the river as close to the subject as we can wade out to them. From an upstream position, our other rescuer on either side, we'll start pulling rope through, sliding through the carabiner. That will then slice the rope right down towards the bottom of the river, right towards the foot of the subject. At that point in time, we'll pull the pop, hoping to pop their foot out to have the subject get rescued by our downstream safety team who are waiting for the subject to pop out and float free. We may find ourselves in a situation where someone is foot and trapped with their face down in the water with no airway. We have no banks or working zones to work from, but we feel that it's an area secure enough for us to be able to access our subject. We may choose to swim out to our subject doing what we refer to as the Hail Mary style of rescue. What we'll do is we'll start a minimum of 15 meters upstream, swimming out towards our subject, trying to line ourselves up 
upstream of our subject. To know whether we're upstream of our subject or not, we'll put someone acting as a rescue beacon in line with the subject's hip. They can then signal us either further to river left, further to the river right, or stick their arms straight up in the air when we're directly above our subject. We can then reach down, trying to grab onto them, and instead of trying to grab onto their life jacket, we'll try and grab on between their legs. By getting a good grip on them, hopefully we'll pull them out and wash them free. To many people, this seems like a very crude technique, and in fact it is. However, we realize that our subject has very little time to be able to A, hold their breath, or B, go without breathing. So this is really a Hail Mary technique of let's hopefully be able to grab onto them and knock them out. In summary, if the subject has an open airway, direct contact cannot be made and there's one bank to do the rescue. Stabilize via paddle toss or use the ET3 method. If there's two banks available, use a stabilization line with a simple cinch. If the subject does not have an open airway, work towards immediate extrication. The paddle pull is the two bank method of choice. If there is no working environment, the Hail Mary may be the technique of choice. Remember, two assessments need to be made for all rescues. Can we perform the rescue in relation to our skill level? And should we perform the rescue in relation to an acceptable level of risk? And we recommend taking a rescue course from a certified rescue professional.